I've been waiting for this laptop for five months. This is exciting. <laughs> This is cute. Little tank. Like your wrists. Which one case? <laughs> oh, are you ready for this? Anyway. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi-Fi there and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Okay, that's cheesy. <laughs> Guide. Uh... Ooh. It's a bit uglier than I was expecting. What? Do you not think? What ugly? Like the whole setup's a bit ugly. What are you? But maybe it's because it's not. I'm not. I've got my hands on it yet. So this is a new Asus ZenBook Pro Duo UX582 which was released on Friday and I was lucky enough to get my hands on one the day it came out. It's now Sunday so I've had the laptop for a couple of days and this is my first impressions. So my daytime job is a software developer. On top of that I'm a wedding photographer so I edit quite a lot of photos and also do some video editing. So in this video I'm just going to put the laptop through its paces um, try some Premiere Pro, some Lightroom and some Visual Studio. So the model I have here is the top of the range. It was £3,000 and I was personally upgrading from the Dell XPS 15. Um, the reason being I, I travel quite a lot and I was looking for something that uh, would allow me to have more screens without actually carrying a portable one with me. So this was perfect for what I was looking for. So first impression when I opened the box was it was kind of a little bit ugly, but actually having used it for a couple of days, it's definitely something you quickly get used to and having the extra screen um, is definitely beneficial. So out of the box, you get a stylus, uh, which is definitely useful, but there's nowhere to actually put it. Um, so I'll put that on the other side. And you also have a rest, which I have to admit is definitely more comfortable but because I'll be traveling with the laptop, I'm trying to just leave it to one side at the moment and just get used to typing without. So. so the size of the laptop is very similar to the Dell. However, it's slightly thicker, which is obviously due to the screen. However, it does have a huge battery pack. But the advantage of that is it does also have super fast charging. So the main selling point of the laptop is obviously the two screens. Now, both of these are customizable and you can even set different wallpapers for the top one and separate one for the bottom. So the keyboard's obviously a little cramped as it tries to squeeze in the mouse on the right hand side. Uh, I'm personally using a separate mouse, which is much more comfortable for me. So let's take a look at the ScreenPad Plus. And by default, it's over on the left hand side, but I find that when I'm working, if I drag the mouse to the left, it starts popping up. So for me personally, I find it more comfortable if I just sit it in the center of the bottom. What I do like about the ScreenPad Plus is that you can customize it to your preferences. So I've got one set up here which opens Visual Studio on the main screen and then we have SQL Server in the bottom left and Microsoft Edge in the bottom right. So if I just go ahead and press this one button now you'll see all three open. So the first thing I'm going to take a look at is Visual Studio. Now I'm currently working on a website and 
The idea before I got the laptop is I would have my Visual Studio at the top screen and then split the bottom to one into SQL Server and then the bottom right into like a web preview. The problem that I found pretty much instantly is when you move the website into the bottom right, the space is actually not wide enough. So the responsive web design actually but thinks that you're on some kind of iPad or phone. So it slightly messes up the layout, which isn't really that useful for me. So I find that now the way I'm working, I have the website on the main screen along with my code and I just flip between the two and then the bottom right, instead of having the website, I now have a Trello board, which has a list of all my outstanding jobs. Similarly, on the bottom left, I have SQL Server and most of the time that's fine. So if I'm just doing a basic query or something, then I can use it. I do find that I have to lean forward a little bit now and again, um, but in general, it is perfectly fine and, and workable. If I'm working on some more of my more complex processes within SQL Server, I also find that I'm, again, switching SQL up onto the main screen, so I've got more room. Next on the list is Lightroom. Now, the laptop doesn't actually come with any card readers. I was expecting a micro SD card reader, but there doesn't seem to be one on here, at least unless I'm completely missing it. So, picture we have one to hand. So for any of the Adobe products, you have the control panel as well. So you can actually go in and configure this to your requirements and you can add buttons, you can move them around and, and just set it up exactly how you prefer to work. So I quickly turned off the control panel and instead I tend to have my main screen in develop mode and then at the bottom I have as my grid so I can flip through the other photos when needed. As far as editing is concerned, um, the laptop obviously has no issues whatsoever. I have some presets here and as you can see, just hovering over and quickly, there's no issues whatsoever. And if I want to edit anything in Photoshop, I can do that very quickly. And you see here on the control panel, zooming in and out. And finally, if I just use something, a third party plugin like Portraiture, the whole process is very quick. And finally, we come to Premiere Pro. Now, previously, this has always been a struggle for my laptop. So we're going to go right ahead and open that up. So again, as you open Premiere Pro, the control panel opens up, which can be useful. But for me, again, personally, I probably won't use it. I think the layout is better suited to having your main editing on the top screen and then your timeline across the bottom. So I'm just going to go ahead and import some clips. So I'll create a new sequence and then look to bring some footage onto the timeline. So if I now start by pulling my first clip onto my timeline and I will produce the video, let's put it at full HD and you can see instantly there are no issues whatsoever with playback. So using the control panel, I can zoom in on the timeline. I can, I can flick through the different frames of the video. And I've got a whole other bunch of buttons here that do all different things. Like I say though, for me, it's not too helpful. I will probably just have the timeline going across the whole second screen. And then I can work with both at the same time. One final thing I will just include before I end the video is, um, no more typing any pins or passwords. The laptop has built-in face recognition, so all I have to do is look at the screen and it automatically unlocks, which is great. The video is purposely not run into any technical specifications. Uh, I really just wanted to give you a first-hand view of how, how it performed with all of the different software packages that I use. Uh, hopefully it's been some use. If you've got any questions, just drop them down below and I'll try to answer them. So that concludes my quick intro to the laptop. You're probably wondering, is it worth £3,000? And my answer to that is simply, yes, yes it is.